Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I want to talk to you about a new addition I've made to my backup strategy. It's something small, but I think it's definitely worth talking about and that is off-site backups. So first things first, what is an off-site backup? Uh, essentially how I think of it is it's a backup of all your information that you have, whether it's at home or however or wherever you back up your information and you store it somewhere else apart from the normal place where you do your backups. So a, an example here is I have my backup strategy here in my apartment. It's just underneath the camera. I've got my Synology under there. This is my main point of uh, backup. This is where everything really happens. But why would you do an offsite backup? Uh, and the reason is in case something happens at your main source of backup. So say there's uh, an electrical failure or something like that and it fries all the drives or there's a fire or heaven forbid someone breaks in and steals it, then my main backup is gone. So uh, this is why you have a backup of everything and you put it off site. Now where can off site be? It can be pretty much anywhere apart from your main point of backup. It can be at a friend's house, at a parent's house, uh, at work, if they let you store it at work in a safe or something like that, or in a safe deposit box at a bank. Say you have one of those, you can put it there. But the key is to have it away from your main point of backup in case something goes wrong at your main source because you can be very compromised if someone comes in and takes all your stuff. So this is something that's been missing from my backup strategy for a while for a number of reasons that I won't go into. But uh, let's just talk about the drives that I ended up using for it. It was very simple. I just used a bunch of hard drives from Western Digital. These are the My Passport Ultras. Now there's a bunch of reasons why I went for these drives and I'll go through them very quickly. One is the price. This is a two terabyte version and I bought this on Amazon in the UK for about 80 pounds, which is incredibly cheap for the amount of storage and for a number of other reasons which I'll get into. Uh, the second reason I went for them is the size. This is the two terabyte model and as you can see, it fits in the palm of my hand perfectly. It'll go in my pocket very easily. Uh, for the thickness, it's actually just a hair thicker than my finger uh, and one terabyte version is even thinner than that so they take up very little space that's a really key feature there it's just how nice and small they are so if you do put it at a friend's house or a parent's house in one of their safes it's not going to take up a lot of space that is a big key and a third reason why I really did like this drive was it has USB 3 now of course there are faster interfaces available like Thunderbolt and things like that but you have to remember that those drives are really expensive and you hopefully you know heaven forbid you'll never actually need to use this. So investing a large sum of money in something that's a little bit faster than a, just a standard USB 3 is something not worth doing in my opinion. So USB 3, it's fast enough, it's very fast, it's almost a commonplace interface now, but don't need to go for something with Thunderbolt, as long as you just make sure it's fast enough and something like USB 3. But the key and the reason why I went for specifically the Passport Ultras is that they have encryption. They have 256-bit encryption software. And how you set that up and what does that even mean and what is encryption? So let me give an example here, uh, and it's a real reason why some people don't do offsite backups in the first place. Say you have a hard drive of all your information, all your content, your pictures, your video, all your personal information, things like that, and you put it in your parents' house somewhere. Say they don't have a safe and they just put it in their office drawer and things like that. And say their house gets broken into and that hard drive gets stolen. Well, all your information at that point is 100% compromised because they can just plug in that drive and have access to all of your information. And that is a big problem. And that's why a lot of people don't end up doing offsite backups in case something goes wrong because they don't have control over what happens once they take it offsite. So that is why these encryptions are a big deal because if you, when you set it up, you install software on your computer here and you set it up with a password and things like that and you can set up which computers and which usernames uh, and which profiles can actually have access to that information automatically. So when you plug the drive in, it will automatically say, hey, this is a drive, I recognize it and unlock it for you. But if someone takes the drive and plugs it in somewhere else into someone else's computer and the drive does not recognize it, it will not unlock. All the information is completely secure they will never be able to get access to it and the great thing is even if you send those drives to western digital they will not be able to unencrypt them they will not be able to get your information so that is a key point here as well for anybody that thinks about getting these drives make sure you have a note of the passwords and things like that secure them somewhere safe in something like one password or whatever password software that you want to use of your choice but make sure you keep those passwords safe because if you forget them uh, and you plug it into a new computer that you have uh, and you don't have those passwords you're 
locked out of your own content, which kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion, I think. But how often should you do offsite backups? And this is a question I asked myself for a while. And I'm kind of thinking of doing it every six months at this point. I might do it yearly until I can justify doing it every six months. Right now on this label, it says 2014 Q4 photo and video backup. Now, the reason I did Q4 is just so I know it's the end of the year. So it's at the end of the year, 2014, I did all my backups of all my content and I've strewn it in a couple of places all around the world, which I won't tell you about for obvious reasons. But something worth thinking about is how often are you gonna be doing it? Are you gonna be using the same hard drives? Are you gonna be taking them back and replacing them? Or are you just gonna buy new hard drives? Uh, at this point, I'm thinking I'll probably take the hard drives back from their from their offsite locations, I'll bring them back here and do another backup uh, for probably two or three years. I'll probably do yearly cycles until I can justify doing more hard drives. But it's something worth thinking about. If you have a large amount of data, then you might need to do it in batches and in you know sections and things like that. But I managed to cram all my information onto a two terabyte drive, which I was very lucky to do. So just to recap here, what are the hard drives that I've been using? These are the Western Digital My Passport Ultras. If you are thinking of doing offsite backups, definitely look at these guys. These are really affordable, uh, and especially with that encryption stuff, that is a big key if you're gonna be taking them offsite. That is a massive, massive plus in my opinion. So definitely check these drives out. I have a link to them down below. So look at these if you're gonna be doing offsite backups. But speaking of backups, I mentioned here that I've got my Synology underneath my desk, and I've done a couple couple of different backup strategy videos before. Uh, I'll put little thumbnails over here for you to check them out. The first one is my workflow for when I'm backing up and working on my images. This is my photo workflow for my backups. And I've kind of split it up into two stages to give you a brief overview. Stage one is kind of when I'm working on the image uh, and I do backups to the cloud and on my hard drive and to time capsule and all sorts of cool business. And then in stage two, that's where the Synology comes in. This is my long-term backups. I've got it set up for a whole bunch of different drives and it goes to the cloud and all sorts of cool stuff. So check that out if you wanna have a, an idea of what my backup workflow is for when I'm editing my pictures. And speaking of Synology, I did a separate video specifically on how I've set up my Synology. And I'll put a little thumbnail here and a link to that as well. If you just click on it, it'll take you to that video in a new tab. Uh, to give you a very quick idea, a Synology is a network attached storage solution Solution. It is basically a server that is connected to my internet connection so I can access it anywhere in the world. Uh, you can do very complicated setups or very simple setups like I have. Uh, they're a little bit pricey, but they're definitely something worth looking at if you really want to invest in a solid backup strategy. Again, click on the thumbnail there and it will take you to the video and it gives you a really good overview of what that system is. So hopefully this has helped you think about doing offsite backups. It's something that a lot of people really don't do all that often for a number of reasons, but it's something definitely worth doing, especially if there is any potential for your house to be compromised in any way, whether it's uh, electrical frying or power outage or you know fires, burgling, all that kind of stuff. So look at offsite backups is really important. And as I showed you, these drives are really inexpensive. So it's definitely something worth looking at. Hopefully you have found this useful. I've been Kramer Comic, and I'll catch you in the next one.